and I remember one day um because nobody was going to introduce me to Ted, I decided I'm going to introduce myself. Yeah. So remember one day the show is over, guys are leaving, they're packing, whatnot, they're putting their gear together. Ted is somewhere eating chips. You know that chips have been given by the restaurant, the one for complimentary because you've done a show. So he's eating chips and having his bag and whatnot. And I pulled a chair and sat next to him with his mouth full of chips. I told him, Ted, my name is Steve Ominde. <laughs> I'm going to change the game, homie. <laughs> and whatever you guys are doing is amazing, and I'm gonna do it one day. What I like about Ted, eh? he didn't, he didn't, he didn't dismiss me. Yeah, listen to me. He asked me, "What do you do?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the time, I not even finished form four, and um, he saw I was interested in what they do. And by this time. Um, they had a music video. I need to mention that. Mm -hmm. They actually did have a music video that was shot by Leo Slingerland. In my life, I've had so many ups and downs. No hands to hold on to. I try, try to find love I can, but no one seems to care like you. Family TV. I don't even think Family TV was there, but I think they were called something else. They used to, they used to, they used to, they used to sell music. They were called Tune In or something. Yeah, <laughs> they had a store for selling music, Christian music. So, and Jimmy Gaffu played that music. Yes, music. and these guys had a nicely shot music video. Yeah, and they had an album. It was called Me and Gima, if I remember right. Yeah. It was a, it, it was on tape. It wasn't on CD. It was just on tape only. It was, I can't remember how many songs though. Maybe I think about six to eight songs or something like three, three on each side or four, four on each side. I, I don't quite remember. But it was a tape that sounded good. And every time they had their show, they were selling their tapes. Yeah. So with my brokenness and whatnot, I'd, I found some cut 200 bob and I, I bought a tape. And I'd listen to this music. It just became like religion. Like I was just listening and trying to figure out what it is about these guys uh, and how they got to where they are yeah musically so this is this is this is this is the evolution of how i got to the point of actually starting to meet people in kenya mm -hmm. who are now not those americans that we were following now i found artists mm -hmm. here in nairobi that now i could i could reach out to and i could talk to and 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 we could we could have that conversation about As music aspirational but then you could still touch them exactly man so okay now by that by this time mm -hmm. are you listening to their music from a production ear and thinking hmm i want to do this i want to begin i or oh, because remember you, you had said you 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 wanted to be a musician you want to be yes. a singer i wanted to sing at first yeah. yeah so now are you, where are you at this time and what year is this is this 95 96 and where this is 95 96 now now i'm just about to get out of high school yeah okay when did you finish high school in 95 okay so now here we are and um towards 95 ending going to 96 um heart ministries kind of uh, gets defunct yeah and everybody goes solo and um ted is still my focus <laughs> it is great yeah on this side <laughs> yeah it is producing an album called drastic yeah um and both of both of these guys it's 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 like it's like prince and and mj you know they're both geniuses and 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 brilliant and icons in what they're doing so i'm 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 looking at both these guys yeah but Ted is the guy who I feel is doing the thing I want to do. <laughs> because Pete, Pete was too good of a singer that I, I couldn't match up if I decided I want to start singing like Pete. To me, he was far gone, yeah? So the place I thought I could find solace was in the direction of what Ted was doing. So, by this time, 95, 96, Ted goes um, into production almost full time, yeah? Mm -hmm. Ted links up with a studio called Sync Sound mm -hmm. in South Bay. And Ted lands a job there as a producer. And um, 
these guys are running the show by this time yeah and uh, by this time i would say there's probably maybe three at most four uh, proper studios in nairobi yeah there was there was there was bruce somewhere there was samawati somewhere and there morris. was there was morris there was jack odongo somewhere i don't know that i've mentioned everybody and then there was ted and ted is the guy now me i was i was i was, I was on him <laughs> yeah so um ted by this time um because now he has access to a studio facility where he can work you know at his pace and write at his pace and do the music he really wants to do ted signs up two acts yeah and one act is uh, a girl duo um mm-hmm. by the name of shades of black now shades of black come to kenya and they just they just change everything like, <laughs> like you know they just came and it just the whole thing just it just it's like it's like the way cinema went to 3d <laughs> you know so they come and everything just you know finally serengeti group yes finally we're now starting to sound like americans finally our production is as dope as jodes yeah so i remember there's this one evening capital fm like they had a late night show like it to 10 30 11 in the night eh? um so i'm listening to radio in my room and then there's a presenter and the presenter is interviewing some two people in the studio and this is usiko so these two people are talking about their music yeah they had them like who are these guys then they're like yeah we're shades of black um i remember there's one called fiona i can't remember the name of the other chick and so they're talking about their new songs and 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 their, their vision and how they've worked and they've done an album and the album is out and the album is being mastered in germany you know like <laughs> the album has been sent for mastering in germany it's coming back on cd <laughs> yeah it's coming back on cd it's not just coming back to be sold on cassettes it's coming back printed on cds it's been mastered in germany you know this was space age at this time yeah mm. but this time i think there's only i think two cds that were, had been produced by kenya there's the mushrooms and there's mungano and all these were done abroad mm. in the early 90s so now this is the first hip record coming to kenya on cd mm. And and also to mention pop because yes. it's it's it was for this generation it was for it was for you are my youth at that time yes. so this was the music that you could say yes i like correct it's not that i'm listening because my dad has and my yes. uh, you or know or because that it's kenyan exactly. it's kenyan and it was dope it was yeah. really nice mm-hmm. so they introduce a song called pamoja kwa upendo I, let me tell you i have that cd up to today <laughs> i it's song number two. it's a song <laughs> that i know so well i have listened to so much for i don't know how many years now <laughs> So they played this they played this song eh? and it was just it was just mind blowing you know but this time I'm just receiving such mind blowing things happening to my life like within the same one year eh? that this all this is just building it's just building that desire and taking me in the direction that I really want to go yeah so they played this song and then after that they played Serengeti Groove Maze I couldn't sleep that night you know the capital is over those days radio never used to go up to morning radio used to quit I think at 11 I'm awake I can't sleep you know what I'm saying so like 
This radio used to quisha. <laughs> this, this radio used to quisha. Like, they mm. play the anthem and then after that, they expect guys to go and sleep. Yeah. So, here I am and there's shades of black and then there's one other actor that Ted has also signed on just around the same time by the name of Hudson. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Hudson was now the more gritty, he was the more street, he was the more voice of the people kind of artist, you know. The the, the 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 eastland side of Nairobi could relate to him. He was doing uh, raga. He was he was he was on that kaflo, yeah. You are to me more precious than the ocean breeze that sweeps across the seven seas. Oh, everything I do. smart guy because he found a way to just capture the market yeah um shit the black was was for the one percent the bougie guys <laughs> the guys who know changing faces and tony braxton mm-hmm. the guys who know you know that can nice ka hip ka smooth r&b kina baby face and whatnot. now hudson was was the shabaranks mm. he was the he was the <laughs> miniman of that time you know so he had his own unique demographic that he was completely able to capture at this time eh? and then of course Hudson just grew and just became larger than life you know in in Kenya there was an award ceremony in 97 uh, the first music award ceremony Kisima yes 1997 which because by this time I'd been hanging around Ted so much or rather forcing myself on Ted so much eh, that now he had even given me something to do for him in Kisima. I hold yeah? on. You don't you can you can't <laughs> run over those stories like that. <laughs> so Kis- so wait, where were you hanging out to Ted because the last I go to his studio. So because okay, now you guys had become pals where he had he yes. had given you access to. Yes, because what happened is mm-hmm. by this time I'm in Langata the studio is in South Bay. There days I, I I had fair for Matatu. I'd take a matatu to Nyai Stadium, then another one to South Bay, yeah? Mm-hmm. And there are days I didn't have enough, so I'd take a matatu to Nyai Stadium, and then I walk across to South Bay, because it was like, what, about 30 minutes, which wasn't too bad. Mm-hmm. There was nothing I was doing anyway, mm-hmm. yeah? I was out of school, I was out of a job, there was nothing I was doing, so the best thing I could do was go there unannounced and figure out maybe this guy wants to see me today. <laughs> yeah? So I did that so much, yeah? Yeah. And we'd sit at the reception, and and it would be two hours, three hours. The secretary tells him, that guy who came here last week is here again. Do you want to see him? And sometimes he'd, he'd be kind enough to, you know, open the door for the studio and I'd walk in and, and have a seat somewhere at the back there and watch them work, you know. Whoa. And this really was also another uh, milestone, you know. The fact that I was actually in a studio that was producing good music large format mixers, digital recorders, you know, a sound booth, all the good things, yeah. So you actually experienced Ted create some magic. Yes, or, I did. Well, have it be ads, have it be yes. music. You are in you are in the presence while he did it. Yes, I was there for a couple of, of, of things that he did and I, I, I could understand nothing about what he was doing, but I was there and that was good enough. Mm-hmm. And there are times he was too busy and I wouldn't be able to get it, but it was still okay because for me, I was where I wanted to be, yeah. in in a sense, yeah. I was not doing it, but the the, the energy I was receiving it. You mm-hmm. know, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So by this time, we 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 talk every now and then, and and by this time, really, Ted was 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 the was the go-to guy 
for anything, be it commercials, uh, be it um, songs for anything government related and whatever artists were flocking at, at his place you know to try and get deals mm. and so by this time there were two things I was interested in doing there's a girl group that I had met and is rap and by the way also rap community is it rap community is it is, 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 is started happening it's almost starting to happen okay, it's, okay, it's, yes, it's okay. bubbling yeah okay. by this time yeah so there's a girl group I had met at this time yeah and with my a little knowledge on how to shikilia a few keys on the keyboard, I kind of felt like I could produce something, yeah? But I had never tried, yeah? So I knew because I don't have any access to any studio, the best thing I can do is find a producer and see if this producer can produce these guys, yeah? So I went to Ted and I asked him, how much do you charge to produce a song? And I had a tape ready to, like, if we, pro- <laughs> if, if we were able to produce that, I had a tape ready so that at the, <laughs> at the end of the session I can put the, 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 the track on the tape. Eh? And then I go to this Kagal group, yeah? So I gave Ted the tape and we talked. And he said, yeah, we can work, but right now I'm busy. Um, there was a lot of things I was doing at that time. And um, I asked him how much would it really cost to, you know, just to, to produce a song. He's like, well, for you, um, I could probably do it for about 5k and that was the end of that <laughs> conversation. He still has my tape by the way. I think he still has the tape somewhere. Like I, didn't, I, didn't, I wasn't even able to ask for it again. So that, that, that explains to you the, 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 the state of affairs at that time. Yeah, We were ambitious, we were broke <laughs> and we had no knowledge on what we were trying to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But we knew there's something we wanted to do. Yeah, there was something bubbling, yeah. yeah? There was yeah. something that we re- that that was really uh, you know t- trying to come up at this time, yeah. So Kisima Awards um is coming, yeah? Mm-hmm. Because the first ever Kisima Awards. The first ever Kisima Awards. 